to some jackass company called GetCerebral.com. Also called Cerebral. They're supposed to be this like this online healthcare like doctor. And it was during the pandemic that they blew up because people didn't want to go out and go to doctors, blah, blah, blah. Um, that were advertising on Facebook about, like, you know, get online, like, a, a teledoc for, you know, your anxiety and depression and ADHD. And I was up in... Cincinnati with a broken femur you know my hometown here is uh, Tampa Florida <clears throat> so I was just up there temporarily you know I wasn't at my house down here like away from my city my driver's license everything's from here so it was just kind of a temporary thing while I healed my broken femur which took about a year so this ad kept popping up on Facebook and I clicked on it one day after seeing it a bunch of times on there you know and it was this place called Cerebral at getcerebral.com right and so I was like okay and I like start reading their site because you know I've got ADHD and I've got PTSD and uh, trauma and you know I had been talking to a counselor for a while too after some like you know big uh, domestic violence uh, incident that I went through for you know three or four years Um, yeah, so I was like, you know, maybe I should get a doctor for that, talk to them, blah, blah, blah. And I work from home. I don't, you know, like, want to get a doctor up in Cincinnati uh, because I, I don't really live there. I don't have an address up there, really. I was, like, staying with my family. I didn't know how long I was going to be up there and would have to, like... You know, switch, switch doctors and like, do it all over again um, down in Florida. But so I like I'm reading the site and everything like you know looks good. They're like, yeah, we can treat you no problem for your mental health stuff. Uh, you know, and can write prescriptions. You'll see a doctor. We'll write your prescriptions and we'll mail it to you like all online so I uh, signed up for an account with them and they don't have like well at the time they didn't have any sort of disclaimers or anything like that and just had you know a few landing pages to get your foot in the door and get you to start signing up for an account so they won't give you any more information until you sign up as a user you know to see what the like the sessions would be like like you know what the chat room would look like and like you know how they prescribe the medications and you know what doctor you're gonna be talking to and all of that <clears throat> And so I sign up for like with my email and a password and just a little bit of information about myself, you know, like demographic information, I don't know, male, white or, or something like that, you know, nothing. And then click next and they're like, you know, well, to, you know, continue signing up as a user, we need you to link a, a credit card on file to it. So I just put in some, like, uh, I guess it must have, it was my checking account, my, um, 
my personal checking account. And then, like, then they show you, like, the user portal. You see the, like, the back end of the site and can learn, like, you know, who, what doctor you're going to talk to and set up an appointment with them and, like, things like that. And right away I was like, ooh, this isn't going to work. Um, so I never set up an appointment with them, never saw a doctor, like, you know, and just, um, forgot about it, but, um, you know, and I've got ADHD, and that's, like, the, a big thing that they were advertising on there, too, is that they can treat ADHD, um, you know, online. So I'm a really busy person too. I run three big businesses. I've got a software company, like a, an app that I run. I've got another app that I run called xxxmultimedia.com. It's like a Netflix style app. And it's got a thousand movies on it that you can buy and rent. and. Um, sign up for a subscription and watch as many stream as many movies as you want like a like a uh, HBO Max or Disney Plus kind of thing you know and I'll get a thousand movies on it like and it's all my content I own you know I shot all the movies I'm in half the movies or I've hired the the actresses and the actors that appear in the other movies and I wrote the scripts for it, I shot it, I edited it, and then I built by hand my own like Netflix app and I turned it into a streaming service. So I've got that business, I've got you know a bunch of like <clears throat> stores online, um, I've got like a, I'm sort of a, an adult content creator as well. Like, so just like a YouTuber would put their movies, upload their movies up on YouTube and collect ad revenue. I sort of do the same exact thing, like with my movies, my older movies, you know, I've got my own streaming service and um, I've got these like stores um, it'd be, I don't know, kind of like an Amazon Prime, or not Amazon Prime, uh, Amazon sort of deal where, like, they have <clears throat> other stores sell their products on their site, so I can start my own Amazon store and sell products on their site. Uh, Amazon, they do have a department where they sell, like, their own merchandise on there like they've got their own brands on there and everything like that like I mean they're a huge company but I guess like an eBay too kind of but not with like a not an auction house or anything like that um so yeah I a business owner sign up for um a store on this site like like Etsy I guess and then I sell my videos through this other platform, you know, and they get a cut of the sales because it's their platform, their credit card processor. Uh, and then, you know, their customer, like their user. And then I get, you know, half the commission for the sale too, you know, and that's my split on it. <clears throat> so we got... Uh, businesses like that in the adult industry uh, there's many vids there's clips for sale there's uh, only fans and a bunch of other sites too um, model centro things like that so my movies um, 
go out on those uh, stores as well, those platforms as well, through my account. So I'm a busy person, you know, and I'm working by myself. I used to have, you know, I, I half a dozen, dozen different employees that I was hiring to upload my videos and had like business partners that we, that I work with and we split the workload. Um, but I've been doing a lot of this by myself recently and I've got you know, tons of these big projects going on and stuff. So, um, you know, the Teladoc thing through Cerebral just isn't going to work. You know, I see the back end of it. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, they were all like this, you know, made all these big promises uh, in their advertising material. They're like, yeah, we can, you know, treat your ADHD we can, you know, treat your mental health, your trauma, PTSD, um, anxiety, depression, uh, online on our service. And then as soon as I sign up for an account and link my card to it, I'm like, oh shit, I feel like I've been got. You know, it was this bait and switch, really, that it felt like, like, you know, something in the back of my head, too, like, tells me, you know, when you're about to, like, link your card to something, like, you know, like, you know, is this place uh, trustworthy? Like, I've been seeing their ads for a few months now on online, you know, and they're talking that they can treat ADHD and anxiety and all that stuff. Um, so let me see, I got this email up here too, where I kind of recount the story a little bit. Um, yeah, but they're like, the big thing too was that like, you know, they were advertising that they can treat ADHD. And that's the ads that I kept seeing over and over and over. And I've been treated for ADHD since third grade. I was on uh, Ritalin, methylphenidate as a kid. Um, Concerta was the brand. It's like extended release all day, Ritalin. And then, you know, through college and after college, when I entered the workforce, I was taking, I was still on Ritalin um, and taking Ritalin patches uh, for, for a long time. And then was on Adderall for a couple of years that I had switched to just to find something, you know, effective because Adderall and Ritalin are, you know, both stimulants for treating ADHD, but they work a little differently than each other. One of them is like, it prevents dopamine from getting reabsorbed from the receptors, so that causes dopamine to build up and increase your focus and your attention and your concentration and your motivation. And then Adderall just causes it, your brain to release more dopamine, like new dopamine. So one floods it with one prevents the dopamine from getting reabsorbed, so more builds up that way, and then the other just releases new stored dopamine in your brain. So they have different modes of action. So it is beneficial to try both and see what works best for you, or maybe switch from one to the other every few months to, um, you know, not build up tolerances to the medications. Um, 
no. I'm prescribed Adderall right now to this day um, and take just the like instant release pills I think it's better than the extended release. I used to be on extended release too, but I don't use it every day and I don't want to use it all day. You know, I might just need like a four hour or six hour, you know, concentration session and don't want to be like kept up all night because maybe I don't start work till four in the afternoon. So I don't want to take an extended release pill that's going to have me up throughout the night. You know, and then I'll just take like, you know, the lowest dose that I need, like maybe half a pill, uh, just to get enough to like, you know, be able to focus on a task and finish it all the way through instead of bouncing from, from task to task, never actually completing anything, just like starting work on a bunch of projects that I'm really excited about and then you know, that like motivation is over and then I start getting overwhelmed and thinking too much for it and never actually finish uh, a project. And like I said, I've got a lot of projects that I'm working on right now. I've got a app, a new app that is in development, a desktop app. I've got a Google Chrome extension that, um, I use for one of my business that needs updates and it needs features added to it and I've got new content new videos that need to be uploaded to my like my Pornhub account and my X videos account and you know my streaming service itself and I've got tons of videos like hundreds of videos that need to be edited and then color corrected and then uploaded and distributed and then I need to make trailers for all of these videos and then I need to like upload all of those big files these like you know two three four gigabyte files to like five different websites and that takes you know an hour or two maybe three hours to upload all these files to to you know, five, ten different websites because they each require, they don't share the same file. They, you gotta send the video and distribute it to each one of them. Like, you know, in the old days, you would have to mail out like a master copy of your movie to the different publishers. Like, before the internet, now you can upload a, a movie file to them. Um, these are like four gigabyte files, a lot of them. So it's not like, you know, if I got a, a, a deal, a distribution deal with, uh, with Hulu and Netflix and HBO and YouTube and Amazon Prime, like, I can't just upload one file to all of them, I've got to, you know, send in the packaging material and the video file and upload it to each one of those different partners. And then keep in mind, I got to do that for hundreds of, of videos as a content creator. So anyway, um, I'm up in Cincinnati and sign up for this uh, teledoc called getcerebral.com and link my uh, checking account to it, my like my debit card to it, and then you know as soon as I saw the back end was like no no way man this isn't gonna work like they don't you know, they don't actually treat ADD like. So they were, you know, promising that they can like, you know, and all the ads that I was saying was, you know, about ADHD and that they can, you know, treat it and prescribe medication for it and, you know, do it on all online. And 
So here's, I guess, kind of the, the story. So I've got... I've got this, uh, well, let's say, I know this YouTuber, right? Called CoffeeZilla. He does uh, these investigations into uh, fraudulent companies and like crypto scams. Like, um, you know, he investigated Tether, uh, if you've heard of Tether. There's um, helium miners. He just put out a video yesterday. Uh, it's August 26, 2022. He put out a video on um, the helium mining network, which I know a lot of people were excited about. I know people, myself, you know, that were had big expectations from from. Uh, the helium network they're like you just buy this little box and then you plug it into the into the wall and then you get paid in cryptocurrency because they you know launch a little hot spot and they're like creating a whole map across the world uh, a network across the world and they need coverage so each house and location you set up, you know, you can get paid revenue every month that your hotspot's online. You just got to buy the hotspot from us, right? But that whole thing, like, I know it wasn't intentionally malicious. It was an honest project, but it's not doing great right now. Um, people aren't making a lot of money and the network has yet to take off so it's on pretty troubled waters so he investigates all these um, big things like that so two months ago it comes out that that company I was talking about Cerebral is under investigation by the feds the uh, FTC is looking into them about using deceptive or unfair marketing or advertising practices, including raising questions about programs where the virtual mental health company continues to bill patients for subscriptions until they cancel, end quote. So they are advertising themselves as a healthcare company, right? And with a healthcare company and like a teledoc you expect them to have the same level of uh, professionalism that any doctor would have right like when you go to the hospital they give you a breakdown of all the different services they provide that's what the whole medical billing department is about that's what a medical biller is trained for they've got you know the different codes for different procedures that they do and there's sort of a spectrum of professionalism but generally you know there's the do no harm uh, mindset when it comes to medicine and malpractice and yeah our American healthcare system is super corrupt. You know, it's insane that they can charge two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollars for an ambulance ride in an emergency. They're just screwing the insurance companies, and then the insurance companies are screwing you. You know, people are paying five hundred dollars a month for a premium for healthcare coverage. It's insane like I don't have I don't pay for health care insurance I don't care like <clears throat> I'm not paying $500 a month for health care when I you know could like even going to doctors every month like uh, a counselor like a health care counselor and uh, <clears throat> uh, 
psychiatrist, you know, my bills are only $200 out of pocket a month. And then I think this one, like this teledoc, was uh, $70 a month. Something like that. I, let me uh, get the numbers. And, and so there's a few, you know, really good points I want to make here about uh, Cerebral.com. I guess that's who they were when I signed up for them. It was Cerebral.com, and I guess maybe they changed to GetCerebral.com. Maybe something like that. Uh, okay, it's $85 a month. So for $85 a month, my uh, psychiatrist right now is $175 a month. And then the initial consultation was, I think, like, I don't know, $350 a month. So let me kind of read off this this email, this story that I'm sending to this uh, investigative journalist, to uh, CoffeeZilla. Because, long story short, right, they have been billing my account for 16 months. And I've never used them, I've never seen a doctor through them, they don't send me medications. I haven't even filled out the intake paperwork. They don't have my driver's license. They're like, I, I see some emails, some unread emails, you know, uh, in this account where they were like, you know, oh, we need your, your, uh, your intake paperwork to to continue like right after you know the the week days after I sign up for uh, a, a user account on there just to see their back end they um, Yeah, remember I, I told you, like, you know, they were advertising that they can treat, you know, these different healthcare, like mental health conditions, and I've got, you know, PTSD and trauma, like a lot of trauma and a lot of PTSD and ADHD that I've been treating since third grade, you know, up through college and after college. And, you know, ever since, uh, kind of on and off, you know, I, I move every, you know, year or, you know, sometimes it's, you know, I might live somewhere for six months, so then I will have to get a new doctor because I'm in a different city or a different area. Like, I was in Memphis, and then Cincinnati, and different cities inside of uh, Ohio and, and Florida. So I, I don't have like the same doctors that I've had all through the same year, so I gotta start the process all over again with this new doctor and, you know, like, go to see a psychiatrist and, like, you know, take these tests and everything, like, these attention span, like, computer tests and, like, all these forms, these, like, monthly 
uh, <clears throat> monthly questionnaires, like these big long questionnaires. And then when I was a kid, uh, I would go to my psychiatrist every week, I think, maybe even twice a week. And we'd have an hour long session and he would sit down and like lay down these tiles with six different pictures and have me put the story in order and then would time me for it. And then, you know, would we like did all kinds of different tests like that. You know, I, I didn't really realize, I had no idea what we were doing because I was, you know, young and not really told anything. Just like, like oh, you got your appointment today and like, let's go talk to this doctor or anything. Like I didn't know anything about my medications or anything. I just like, you know, had a hard prop, like hard time doing homework, like never did my homework ever. Like, and struggled with that, like, all through elementary school and middle school and high school. I did great on the tests, but never did any of the homework, and that's why I was able to get through school. So, I'm sure I, like, kind of trailed off here for a minute, but yeah, long story short, so $85 a month they've been building me for 16 months, right? And it's just shy of $1,400 that this company has billed and taken from my checking account that uh, I've never even used their service like I've never and we're talking about a healthcare company a mental health company that specifically targets ADHD people too at that and then you they force you when you're checking when you sign up for when you register for a user account like not even just you do that in a separate step like to actually like sign up your email they force you to link your credit card or debit card to it. In this case, it was my debit card, not my credit card. And uh, and then you see the back end and then they're like, oh, well, we can't treat this and this and this and this and we can't send, you know, controlled substances and uh, can only prescribe like this and this medication when they explicitly advertise that they treat ADHD online like and don't have any kind of like asterisk like you know doesn't prescribe stimulants only you know does um like Celexa or no no maybe it's not Celexa Wellbutrin we only prescribe Wellbutrin or this. Like most ADHD medications are some kind of stimulant, whether it's modafinil, you know, Mod Alert. Um, I was taking that for a long time. Uh, there's Adderall and Ritalin and Vyvanse, Daydrana or Daytrana. You know, I was on Daytrana for a while, I was on Adderall, I was on Adderall XR, <clears throat> which is their all day, like extended release. Daytrana is uh, extended release methylphenidate. It's like a transdermal patch. You like put the patch on your thigh and it lasts all day long until you take it off. Um, was on just like plain Ritalin and uh, Concerta, which is like extended release all day Ritalin. Like, so basically every single different 
ADHD medicine, you can be on like and different formulary and dosages and stuff. And like I said, you should try, you know, the different um, ones as well because they do have a different method of action. And also if you're trying to like prevent uh, like the tolerance to it, switching between two of them, like two different ones of <clears throat> with a different mode of action or just even a different chemical itself you know will you won't have a, a tolerance to that one so you're like you can keep your dose low as low as possible yeah so you sign up for a well you register for a user account and then they give you this disclaimer that well, we can treat that, but we can only do Wellbutrin or, you know, Stratera. And I've taken Stratera before and it didn't work. I've been prescribed Wellbutrin before, but never picked up the medication because it was too expensive for me. It was like 50 something, 150 something dollars a month the Wellbutrin XR and Ritalin was only $20 a month. <clears throat> so this in this email I'm telling uh, you know this investigator what my story is. So if we look online and we search for cerebral in the news, we see that two months ago, they're under investigation by the feds for uh, false advertising, basically. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so Reuters has an article on them. Bloomberg put out an article on them called uh, USA Today put out an article on them. Instagram, TikTok pulls ads for a company over their ADHD and obesity ads because of like so many people like me that were lured into this like bait and switch where they end up billing these customers accounts or these patients accounts I should say without providing any kind of treatments and then they don't have a way for you to cancel your pers your subscription on the site they And that was like the big problem too, was as soon as I saw that, you know, this wasn't gonna work for me and like didn't finish my intake paperwork or anything like that, or like do a teledoc session or like an initial consultation or send them my ID or anything like that, they, uh, I looked for a way to cancel and it was, I, I guess you have to, you know, get in touch with them, like, like email them and then, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like it wasn't, they didn't have a button on there where you can just like, okay, cancel or, you know, unlink your card from it, which is like scary because this is a healthcare company too. And they're trying to pull some shady, like rebuilding business practices where they hope that these like ADHD folks, you know, forget that they're being billed every month for this thing and then holding their credit card number hostage. Like it shouldn't be a healthcare company, a mental health care company that is holding your card information hostage and just going to be billing your account and not providing any kind of service for you. It's ridiculous. So on the the Wall Street Journal, uh, 
they say, quote, you know, the FTC is investigating whether Cerebral was involved in deceptive or unfair marketing or advertising practices, including raising questions about programs where the virtual mental health care company continues to bill patients for subscriptions until they cancel. Um, let's see. Yeah, Aetna and Op Op Optum, which are these kind of medical payment processor companies, have cut ties with them because of their business practices and like the backfire that they've gotten and their ethics. Uh, they fired their old CEO, the FTC, the Department of Justice, the U.S. Department of Justice, and the U.S. Attorney General are investigating them right now. Um, TikTok and Instagram have uh, banned their ads from their platform, pulled their ads from there, because th those were the social media sites, and Facebook too, but I don't see Facebook listed here as a company that pulled ads from them, where they were advertising and targeting, you know, people with mental health conditions and uh, promising a teledoc service to them. And this was during coronavirus. They were a, you know, a new startup that came out when the coronavirus started and these like online doctors became mainstream, like the Teladoc uh, service became mainstream online. <clears throat> so I say, uh, I got this email, you know, that I'm sending to coffee because this is an important investigation. Like, you know, I'm gonna trust that he's gonna make a video on this, you know. I've, this is the kind of thing he does, you know, to, to protect consumers from falling for these scams and holding these companies responsible and giving a voice to all the people harmed by, you know, these these companies and uh, yeah, just just holding them accountable. So you know, I'm telling them like, you know, I'm a big fan, and then like link to some articles about them being, about Cerebral being under investigation. You know, and I say, here's my story about them. So back in early 2021, I had been getting ads on Facebook for a website that says Cerebral can treat ADD online with an online physician and medication. Uh, I have ADHD and I've been treated for it since I was in third grade. I was on Ritalin as a kid and prescribed Adderall as an adult. At the time, I was in Ohio recovering from a broken femur. You know, I was paralyzed in the leg um, and couldn't even walk for six weeks and was in a wheelchair. And I had to leave my hometown in Florida to have my family and girlfriend take care of me for nine months of physical rehab. You know, I, I still have pain every day and pain in my leg. Um, it's the, the biggest bone in your body, you know. I, when I was asleep, like, I feel pain when I'm sleeping. I can't even get away from it then. Like, like the whole time I'm thinking in my, like, 
during my dreams, I'm just constantly aware and feel that pain. Like, even when I'm sleeping, sometimes like how you know you're dreaming sometimes, it's like that, except, you know, I know that I'm in pain and I'm feeling that pain, even though I'm like, you know, it's kind of almost like being semi-conscious. So. And it took a year of that, like during this time, that's what's going on. So I've got <clears throat> uh, my family and my girlfriend taking care of me um, so I can start walking better and building up strength in my leg. You know, I was on switch to crutches for a while and had like a limp and had to build up strength and like, you know, the bone, like the ball socket from the femur was was broken from the rest of the femur so it's right up like deep kind of in my butt and hit like so you feel this like just deep deep pain like from inside your body it's not something you can like massage it's just this deep bone pain inside of your butt And leg, um, so you know, I wasn't receiving my ADD medicine since I was out of state now, and um, the cerebral ads made it seem legit and like they could help while I was away from home. I read through their entire site, like every page of the site, there might have been, I don't know, six pages to the site on the front end, you know, just kind of some like happy-go-lucky like sales pitches and, you know, building up your confidence and trust with them and them making these promises to you and you still got questions, but you're like, okay, well, let me sign up for an account and you know, see how I feel from that. Because <clears throat> you're like, like, do they? Like, what what medications do they prescribe? Like, well, I, okay, it says they treat ADD, so. Um, you know, I read the entire site and the ad material, like the, the ad that I was shown, and everything makes you feel confident that they'll help you and you know are the solution I get my my acne medicine tretinoin and the antibiotics um, for my acne too through another telehealth company called nurks.com and you know I highly recommend them they're great um, you know I told them like because I used to be a pharmacy technician too, so I've, I'm pretty knowledgeable about medications and generics and, you know, if I have a certain symptom, what medications would treat that. So there was this specific medication I needed called tretinoin and um, all the other acne medicine in the world wasn't... Uh, gonna fix the acne that I had because um, I had been using benzoyl peroxide and I had been using salicylic acid and I had been using face washes and medicated body washes you know with salicylic acid in it and soap bars with salicylic acid in it and for years like it didn't help my breakouts at all so I needed something a lot stronger which is this tretinoin stuff that like kind of exfoliates the top layer of skin and just like peels off the top layer of skin to expose that virgin skin underneath. So, and when I got that and started the tretinoin, it worked perfect. Um, you know, I'd been 
receiving the medications from them like so I've got experience too with telehealth and getting my medicine through these telehealth companies and online you know I needed antibiotics recently uh, I had strep throat from this convention that I went to there was like all these people together you know just like with coronavirus like someone's gonna come in there and like could infect everybody but in this case it was you know the the flu strep throat well no it wasn't the flu because it wasn't viral it was strep so with um With that convention, I started feeling like, you know, there was something wrong with my throat. Like, I was having kind of this, like, swallowing pain and just felt there was something off. And, like, you know, I knew I had gotten sick. And over the next couple of days, it got worse and worse until I was in just, like, crippling pain from not being able to swallow. Every time I swallowed, this like this you know, stabbing pain in my throat like and I was in the middle of a convention to a, a business a trade show like a, a very very big one you know like there's a red carpet event like photo sessions going on um, they've got the press there I was featured like in the Tampa Bay Times, like me and my girlfriend's photo from the red carpet before the award show. Uh, I think it was before the award show. It might have been before the like, like to kick off the convention popped up in our like big local newspaper for the area. And you know, it was a big event for us. So I had to get through the rest of the the show. We were featured on, um, you know, across different events at the convention there too. Which reminds me, we need to do the interview for Clips for Sale. Yeah. And get that done after I'm done with this. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah, so I was afraid to swallow. Every time I swallowed, like, I was regretting it. I didn't want to drink anything. Like, I didn't want to stay hydrated because every time I swallowed, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever had bad strep throat like that, but it wasn't just one day either. It was day after day after day of just constant pain every time I swallowed and then like it was you know raspy
bacteria and so she needed to start the antibiotics too and we had it overnight though like from online and we've been taking them for you know I, I should be completing the 10 days here in the next three days I think so I've been on them for like a week but yeah you can see here it's a amoxicillin Yeah, like they literally, they got the imprint on them and they are the same color and shape. You know, you can see which pharmaceutical company like Bayer uh, manufactured them with the doses. So they're pharmaceutical grade, yeah. But yeah, so I get you know, all kinds of medications from online right? acne medicine, you know, from different places. Um, uh, my teledoc for uh, the acne for the antibiotics, the antibiotic acne, I should say. Which is this clindamycin. And then, you know, right now, I'm, I need a prescription for uh, Diflucan. And I'm going to source that, like, because they have Diflucan for, like, it's an antifungal for skin acne, too, actually. Because that's what causes, like, certain acnes is like fungus and I've been struggling with my acne you know I told you that I have that tretinoin and the clindamycin that I get from my teledoc for it so I'm also going to be taking diflucan like, as a just systemic uh, antifungal to get my skin clear like I used to have you know, a lot of acne on my chest, even as recently as a few weeks ago, you know, and I had it real bad on my arms here. I live in Florida, so there's a lot of humidity and heat and you sweat, and then that causes like fungus to build up on your skin. And it's invisible too, actually. It's just within the, the dead layer of skin on the top of your dermis but I noticed it when I got into the shower and like I just had dead skin peeling off like on my neck on my back and I had to like it looked like completely normal skin until I got in the shower and it got wet and then it started like like I started scratching it like this, you know, exfoliating it and all of this dead skin was coming off. And that's a sign of a fungal infection, actually, the skin fungal infection. And you wouldn't think that from just, uh, you know, you would think that, oh, that's just a bunch of dead skin coming off. And what, when you know it's a fungal infection is when you spend two hours, I was in the shower for two hours exfoliating my skin, getting like, every bit of dead skin off you know thinking that okay i'd be good for a month now and i go in the shower the next day in the same exact spots you know same area on my neck and like on my chest my shoulders my back it more dead skin just as much dead skin is is peeling off that day that's when you know you have a fungal infection so I'm gonna get, you know, I've got topical medication that I'm using uh, for it that cleared uh, my skin up. It not only solved that, like all that dead skin coming off, 
de dead skin, which is part of it, you know, but it's also like the fungus is causing it to peel off like that. And, um, you know, these other like topical, like these topical medications to, to treat it. Cause you gotta treat fungal acne different than regular acne. And down here in Florida, it's a big problem because it's a lot hotter and you're a lot sweatier than anywhere else in the U.S. And I I'm from up north. I'm from originally Ohio, you know, Cincinnati. That's where my family is from. That's where I met my girlfriend, actually, when I was up there visiting them a, a couple of years ago. We're like, we're from the exact same hometown, which is kind of cool because we both like she was up, lived in Ohio and I lived in Florida and we met online. You know, I do all my business stuff online. I'm a huge online person. I am online almost 24 seven, like when I work because that's my job. Yeah, you know, so I gotta give her like, you know, these pills as needed. And then, you know, we had the antibiotics that I got from offline to treat the strep throat we had that well that I had and you know she was trying to prevent before her surgery because if we had to move the surgery date then it would have cost five hundred dollars to rebook that we've got you know like her new antibiotics so she doesn't get an infection after her surgery you know, she was having chest congestion, so we ran up to the uh, the Walmart and grabbed some different medications uh, to treat that, you know, and then like, she's got swelling and uh, inflammation pain, so we got ibuprofen for that to help, so she doesn't have to take as much like pain medicine and then, of course, Tylenol, too, because you can take, like, you know, both of these simultaneously because they work in different ways and, like, you know, reduce the amount of pain level for her. And, like, different anti-nausea medications and everything like that, you know. So I learned a lot when I was working in the pharmacy. Uh, and, you know, self-studied for my certification, like my national certification. I, you know, was a CPHT, you know, how there's like a MD or LPN, you know, I had the designation CPHT, Certified Pharmacy Technician for six years. And then we still need to go out and get her an antihistamine because uh, she's got this like itching from the nerves growing back or, well, I guess just from the histamine, the kind of nerve tingling is, is a different thing actually. But yeah, so just, you know, I went, I know when a different medication is needed I kind of know exactly what I needed it's not some big like mystery when I go into a doctor like if I need antibiotics I'll say you know I, I need antibiotics doc or like I need tretinoin to treat my acne so getting back to you know, my story regarding Cerebral. <clears throat> and sorry, this is a, a little bit long. I'm just not gonna sit here and write a script. I'm just gonna kind of do it all in one take and you can cut the pieces out that you need. But just giving you all the context that's relevant here. Um, so I read through their entire site. They see they treat ADHD. Their ad material says that they treat ADHD. And then you 
that's like what they're showing up on your your feed because they're listening in on your phone and they you know start showing you ads because you're talking about it you know with your significant other or with your friends so then it starts appearing in your ads so it's highly relevant to you <clears throat> So after seeing that ad pop up over and over and over, like, you know, we treat mental health, PT, well, not PT, SD, um, you learn to, to trust them because you're like, well, they got an advertising budget and I'm familiar with them now. So I signed up for an account with them with Cerebral and right after linking the card it you become aware like you know you, it just hits you like your stomach kind of sinks you're like oh this isn't gonna work just right off the top of your head that you're like this isn't gonna work so you're like, oh fuck now I gotta cancel and then um They don't let you cancel. They back then, like they do now, after all of the shit they've gotten from people about it and the fact that they're under investigation by the feds, you know, they're a medical company too, a healthcare company. They're under investigation for the feds, uh, and the Department of Justice, the FTC, you know, for their advertising practices. Um yeah, the fact that they like hold your card hostage and force you to to talk to a person and, and get in touch with them, you know, and I don't, you know, I don't have time for that. Sometimes I get distracted and then forget about it completely and just don't even think about that for months or years because... It was such a small amount of time that I was on the site. I like I literally just was checking out an ad and then I went to register for a user account and then I was like, oh well I guess I'll do that later. I'm you know doing something else right now. And then you just completely forget about it. Like not for a day and remember it later, but just indefinitely. Like So they, at the time that I, on the day, I guess, that I checked out the service, which was early 2021, I think it was April, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I think I redacted the the date on on here just for my like anonymity a bit but yeah early 2021 So they promise to treat ADD and then, and you know, when you think of ADD medications, you know, I think of all the different medications that I'm prescribed and they only prescribe just a few of them, not like most of the ADD medications they don't prescribe is what I'm trying to say. And they don't tell you that. They don't give you any kind of warning. And that's kind of important because that's what I take. But they don't tell you that before you sign up for an account. And they force you to link your card. And they've since added a disclaimer on the homepage saying they don't prescribe those medications. Right? And, you know, I go to cancel after linking my card and checking out the back end and then learning that I've been like bait and switched, like, but there's no in-app option to cancel. There's no 
way to unlink my card or cancel. Like I can't just call up my bank and be like, don't let this uh, rebill subscription thing come through. I don't know why banks don't have that like PayPal does where you can just end monthly subscriptions from their site and not have to worry about getting in touch with like that company or like being pissed off by their uh, cancel department trying to like well what if we dropped your your fees to thirty dollars a month or you know give you three months free blah 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 you're like no cancel my subscription they're like well all right well i'm gonna have to forward you to a manager blah 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 like i don't have time for that shit sometimes like i don't have the energy to put into that like you know i've been putting off this email here about like asking them to like please refund my fourteen hundred dollars that they have been taking from my account for the last 16 months the last year and a half like i'm one of their longest customers okay since they've been in business and i have never used their service i have never even completed my intake assessment they don't know who I am. They don't know my medical history. They don't know any information like that about me. They don't have my, uh, I don't think. Uh, what was I saying? The, the camera ran out of battery for a second. What did I just say? Oh, you were just talking about how they were like stealing money out of your account every day. For, right. like. Do you remember the last like sentence I said? I can't remember the very last Just to kind of trigger what I left off at. Yeah, so I'm I'm one of their longest customers, like their oldest customers, and they have never treated me for anything. I've never completed my intake paperwork because I knew right away this isn't gonna work. And then I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna need to cancel. Like, oh, well, I can't even cancel. I can't, you know, change my card or delete the, the linked card to it. You know, it is, they draw you in with these promises and then it's literally a bait and switch. It's a bait and switch scam. They then hold your credit card hostage and then they make it feel like it's your fault that uh, you haven't, canceled your subscription when you don't even know that you're being billed every single month. I've been being billed for 16 months, 16 months, almost to the tune of $1,400 at $85 a month. All right. <clears throat> and I don't think my subscription is still canceled because even when I wrote them this huge letter, explaining how upset I am about this whole thing and was pretty nice about it to them too just like emphasizing some points to them I'll show you that email in a minute they didn't even read it they didn't read it and they didn't cancel my subscription I explicitly said the first words cancel my subscription I can't believe you would bill me for fourteen hundred dollars for 16 months and I haven't even used your service. You don't even know like who I am. I've never spoken to a doctor. I've never gotten any services from you. How on earth could you think that I have used $1,400 worth of services through you? Like, and it was the fact that I couldn't even cancel it. And then I forgot to cancel because like I, I tried, you didn't have a button on the screen. Like, if I see something like that, I immediately go to cancel it, but I'm not gonna sit there going through phone triages for an hour when I've got other stuff on my mind. And like, I'm busy, I got a broken femur that I'm healing, I can barely walk. Like, I've got businesses to run, I get distracted. Like, I have ADD too, and you're targeting ADD folks. Okay, people that already have a problem, like paying attention. Like, you're literally, your ads, Someone created that saying like, you know, 
specifically an image that has like, you know, treat your ADD online through Teladoc, blah, blah, blah. Like to target ADD folks and then hold their uh, credit card information hostage from them and hope that they forget about it. That's like your business model too. It's not our fault you don't have a button to cancel a subscription for it. You're a healthcare company. You're supposed to be honest and not do these deceptive practices like that. You know, they, the healthcare industry has standards. If, you know, when you are, like, when a company advertises a medication on, uh, on television or online, they have to have a number of disclaimers about any potential side effects that that medication might have, you know? might cause death, increase risk of stroke, heart disease, you know, blah, blah, blah. You hear them cram that in during the last 30 seconds of a depression medication ad, right? Because the FTC, you know, said that you have to educate these patients and give them all the information they need to know. You can't just promise them, you know, that this is gonna solve their depression and then it causes all these extra problems too on top of it and they don't know better than that. Like, you know, there's advertising practices and standards within the healthcare industry for a reason too. All right, so shame on you for that one. And then targeting ADD folks too with your like bait and switch scam and then you know, not letting them cancel and hoping they forget, you know, that's pretty messed up. And then not even reading my email when I asked to cancel, like, I think it was either a week ago or about 10 days ago, you know, I, I got sick and then, you know, my girlfriend had a uh, surgery and so I've been like busy and waiting on her hand and foot for the whole week. So I've also been busy and distracted too and like life happens and like I said my femur was broken and I was in pain 24 7 like I couldn't even sleep without being in pain. Like I couldn't escape it there was a lot of stuff going on right then so you know, and I spent so little time on the site that I completely forgot about it too. Like, and I was, I had a, a legal battle, a, a couple of big like legal battles and lawsuits and stuff that were going on around that time too. So I'm under a lot of stress right then, okay? I don't fucking wanna sit there and have someone tell me that, you know, they're going to forward me to another department and a manager so I can cancel or not even read my email. Like when I do email you to cancel, it's still a problem to this day. Okay. It's still a problem. I just emailed you two weeks, like a week to two weeks ago to cancel and you didn't even cancel my thing. You didn't even read the email. You just sent me some like, well, we'll give you three months free, blah, blah, blah. Like, like, so, you know, unless you email us back again, then we're just gonna assume you don't wanna cancel. So you're still holding my credit card information hostage, dude, after I wrote you a huge, like, it, it wasn't too long, maybe like, you know, a, a page with proof and like evidence and, <clears throat> like how much you've charged me and how long you've been billing me to like ask for a refund. I don't care about getting two months free, dude. What about my refund? So, yeah, I've got these like, you know, these health problems going on right then. I've got, you know, these legal battles that 
I've got going on and like potential lawsuits, not like lawsuits that were already filed or anything, but like, like potential lawsuits that, you know, horrible shit is happening to me, okay? And, you know, I'm deciding like, do I want to pursue a legal case against this person? Like, do I need to get a lawyer? Like, you know, because, you know, like this is, you know, damaging my, you know, my health or my business or, you know, like someone's attacking me, like, like, and I've got probably f at least four, maybe five potential lawsuits still to this day that, you know, I can pursue as well. So I'm like stressed out about that stuff too. <clears throat> so yeah, I just, I spent so little time writing my email address and my password and my then credit card, my, my debit card information on it and forgot about it that like your site's not burned into my memory I don't have like reminders on my phone to log into it every month or anything so I forgot about it for 16 months until I finally checked a, a statement from my bank and then saw Cerebral on there I was like like $85 like have they been charging me this entire time like what the fuck I was like, I, I didn't even see a doctor. For them. I don't have any prescriptions to them. I, I didn't even, like, sign up for, like, I, I don't see a counselor anything through them. What service are they providing me? Because so many people, like, sign their credit cards up for stuff and then forget about it. Like, I remember even when I was little, my mom always told me, it, like, if it asks for a credit card, like, don't do it because they're just gonna, like, for the free trial, like, if they want you to put in the credit card for a free yeah. trial, don't do it because they're banking on that you'll forget that you did that and then just bill you, like, over and over again. Right, exactly, because you, you'll be like, you know, oh, it's a free trial right now, you know, and then they'll give you, you know, 30 days or 60 days or 90 days to forget, too. And then they start billing it at twenty dollars a month or twenty five dollars yeah. a month, and then you don't even remember that you had signed up or forgot to cancel because it was like you know free at the time, or it'll be like you know maybe ninety nine cents or something just to charge your card enough to know that like so it works. it's good that there's yeah. money on it right. So they yeah do stuff like that, but yeah if you sign up for uh, billing on an app on a website you should be allowed to cancel on the same app too like if that's where you signed up that's where you get to cancel like yeah it's yeah kind of crazy that they are allowed to just without your consent continue billing your card I know, like, that should not, really should not be And legal. that you have to either cancel your card, especially if you can't get in touch with them at all, you know, or, like, like, file some, some kind of, like, fraud thing with your, with your bank, but, you know, to, like, stop payment on something like that, but, <clears throat> yeah, there needs to be, uh, you know, a law, like, an FTC law about, you know, if you sign up for a service, then, you know, billing on a service, like, wherever you signed up, you can cancel. You have, you have to be allowed to cancel yeah. on there. Like, I do that with my, my apps, my sites, you know. It's a cancel anytime policy. Like, it's because awesome. one, I don't want to, like, I don't want to sit there all day getting these.
you just there's content on it you go on it you explore you get to use it as much as you want like while you're a member while you're a subscriber and everything like you know and then if one day you decide you don't want it then you cancel it you know it's all you know you can do any of the features like that yourself you don't have to like contact the building department and you know convince like them i could probably make more money yeah doing it that way but like planet fitness where you have to physically go to the planet fitness store and then tell them you want to cancel and then fill out the forms there like you can't do it online yeah and exactly and that's why i haven't canceled yet. haven't canceled my planet fitness either yeah like the it's a two-hour trip to like drive up to the planet fitness and then cancel the subscription the membership or whatever but I, I do really need to do that i was using it for a while too and it was like worth it even if it was yeah. just to go up and like do two tanning sessions a month you know because i'm a performer so i need to you know be in shape like have a toned figure and you know have a a good complexion and you know, a tanning bed if you go up there, what, charge like fifteen, twenty dollars per like to oh, sit in the tanning bed. They charge you to sit in the tanning bed? No, it's not Planet Fitness. That's oh, it, it's oh, the free other, there. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like I, I thought it was well, free. Well it's not free. Like, it's, membership, the black it's card. a black card. Yeah. yeah. So with the black card you do that, the like their cheaper plan. Yeah. yeah. So that's why, because just that value from the tanning, instead of doing like a la carte tanning. Oh, so the know, a la carte tanning is what costs like 15, 20? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, um, it might be like 10 or 15 dollars. I, I looked it up a long time ago. I don't really do that very much, but probably now it's more valuable for me to do like the a la carte tanning just as I need, you know, and it might yeah. be a little closer to well, but I would like to go to the gym. It's just we live now I further look, away from the gym. And there aren't any good gyms that are as good as Planet Fitness around here. Like, yeah.